let's go back and look through the tradition and see what theologians have said over generations. And if we take into consideration not just an isolated reading of Genesis 1, but also take into consideration Genesis 2, the second creation account, we start to get a different picture about what creation is all about and what our place as human beings are, you know, what it is, rather, within and among the rest of creation. So you may recall that uh, in Genesis 1, there's no tree, there's no apple, there's no fig leaves, there's no snake, right? There's none of this uh, Eden depiction. We are created, as it says in Hebrew, ha-adama, from the earth, from the clay of the earth. We are clay creatures, earth creatures, earthlings, we might say. And what's really interesting is that science in the last 100, 200 years has really made it clear how kind of prophetic and how insightful the authors of the second uh, creation account actually are because we are made of earth things, right? Our bodies are made of water, hydrogen and oxygen. We're made of carbon and nitrogen. So there's something very humbling about that. But there's also something very insightful about that, which is we are connected to the rest of creation, not given this planet, not given this uh, universe to do with as we please, but we are somehow tied to it. And what the stewardship model suggests, people who fall into this kind of category will say, mm -hmm. what God says after God creates women and men from the earth and breathes God's very breath into them to give them life, there's an instruction that we are to till the earth, that we are to care for it, to cultivate it. Uh, Psalm 24 says God owns this planet, and that we have been placed here as sort of caretakers, stewards, gardeners, people who look after the rest of creation. As the Eastern uh, Church Fathers put it, we are the priests of creation. Uh, women and men are the kind of middle people, the managers between non-human creation and God. But it's not exactly sufficient from the eyes, of, through the eyes of a lot of thinkers, including Franciscans, some of them anyways, Francis of Assisi being first and foremost. And this is where the kinship model, or as it's been called recently, the community of creation model has arisen or has returned. And that's, the stewardship model is a vast improvement over the dominion model that says we can do whatever we want with this. There's still a kind of separation between humanity and the rest of creation. Yes, we have a special relationship to the earth and to the rest of creation. Yes, God has given us a mandate, a responsibility to care for the earth, sure. But it still seems that we are not deeply connected. We are kind of like, almost like aliens plopped in from without. That we are different from the rest of creation because we're still above and against it. We are the ones still kind of in charge and call the shots. It's our responsibility because of our intellect and so on. And what happens is we start to lose sight of the fact and that truth of being created ha adama that we are creation, <coughs> that in relationship to God, we are part of a broader family, part of a broader community, and that that calls and challenges us in certain ways. What it doesn't say is that all creation, all aspects of creation should be treated exactly the same. So the kinship model doesn't suggest that, you know, we human beings have the same value as an ear of corn or like a, a, a ant or something like that. Rather, it's the approach that Francis of Assisi expresses, even in something like his Canticle of the Creatures. Now, you're, you're familiar with that, right? This is probably most famous writing. Um, if you don't know the actual text itself, you know of its musical form in one of two flavors. Mm -hmm. You have, on the one hand, the Lutheran choral anthem, which is like a big march, all oh, creatures of a god and king, <laughs> right? Right, left, left, <laughs> by the left flank march, right? And so you got that flavor, or you have the Marty Hagen, right? The heavens are telling the glory of God. We're kind of dancing around, right? Either one, right? The problem with the Canticle of the Creatures and with Francis of Assisi's vision of creation is that it gets romanticized, it gets kind of caricatured, it gets watered down. He gets packaged into a stone little statue with a bird bath that he gets placed in everybody's garden. <laughs> and you know, when we do that, we dismiss a deep truth that he intuited. Mm -hmm. The deep truth is that all of this around us is in fact related to us in this community of creation in relationship to God. We're not hired hands or stewards like we see in the, in the, in the Gospels. The stewards are always, again, these middle men or middle women. 
God, in fact, calls us as a family to care for one another like we would in our own families. The way that St. Bonaventure talks about it is in terms of piety. He says we need to be more pious people like Francis of Assisi was. And he means in the original Latin, pietas, which is the duty or responsibility one has to their family members. You respond to the needs, as Pope Francis calls it, the cry of the earth, just as we would in response to the cry of the poor, our human family members. Uh, because we are related, because we're part of the same community.